Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dairy Monkey and today we talk about the famous RoboDog spot from Boston Dynamics being used as a robot doctor to attend patients at a US hospital. We will talk about the robot and how it works and we will try to understand if robots can really provide benefits to healthcare. So 2020, as we all know, was the year of the pandemic and really put a high load of stress on hospitals and on hospital workers or healthcare workers to attend all these patients, potentially infectious patients. And one thing that hospitals tried to do was to increase the utilization of contactless solutions for evaluating patients. Of course, to avoid healthcare workers being exposed to potentially infectious patients. And for this reason, hospitals assess the possibility of using robots. In particular, we will look at a study at a collaboration between the MIT and the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Massachusetts in the US. In this study, they tried to use SPOT, the famous SPOT from Boston Dynamics, to support triaging of sick patients and to act as a tail operations platform for healthcare workers to evaluate the situation of the patients. This spot was, by the way, a bit ironically labeled doctor spot, but in fact, don't worry, because it was not a real doctor, of course, it was just a robot being piloted by a handheld device. In fact, there was a hospital worker piloting this robot around, so it was not an autonomous robot, an autonomous system. And of course, there is no need for apocalyptic worries about these things running around uncontrolled in hospitals. In fact, very, they kind of looked more like a fancy a more expensive RC car and the name Dr. Spot was more like a publicity stunt from Boston Dynamics which is very good at marketing by the way. So this robot will perform two basic tasks. The first one was to read patients vital signs with a set of cameras and the second one was to act as a teleoperations platform by basically equipping a tablet for face-to-face -face medical interviewing with a healthcare worker with a patient. So talking about the cameras, these cameras could read signals from a distance of about one three meters and of course this was done to avoid unnecessary contamination of a robot and the four cameras were mounted on the robot to measure different parameters that are typical of people affected of course by covid specifically it was equipped with an infrared camera and three monochrome cameras and the infrared camera of course being an infrared camera it was designed to detect heat and of course the purpose was to detect for example skin temperature and we all know that fever is one of the typical symptoms of COVID, so the purpose of this camera was to see if a patient had an unnecessarily high body temperature. But in addition, this camera could also detect the breathing rate by looking at the mask worn by the patient. So if a patient had a uh, very high breathing rate, the camera could detect the breathing rate from the mask, from the temperature of the mask increasing at a specific rate. Regarding the other cameras, the three monochrome cameras, their purpose was instead to look at variations in the skin color. Basically, if blood flows through your veins, your skin changes color. It changes to a more reddish tone when blood is flowing, which is something that is not always visible. Sometimes it is invisible to the naked eye, but there are techniques. For example, there is a technique that is called remote photoplethysmography that is used to see variations in color due to blood flowing. And of course, from this technique, you can detect, for example, the pulse of a patient or the levels of blood oxygenation. And by the way, it can also be used to detect deep fakes, to detect if a person is actually a love person or an image generated by a computer. I also made a video about it. If you're interested, check out in the description. So with this set of cameras, the robot would walk around, meet the patient, activate its cameras, and with these cameras take all these vital signs, all the parameters that were then sent to the healthcare worker through the handheld device, through the joystick. And of course, it could turn on the tablet if face-to-face -face interviewing with a healthcare worker was required. And I know, I know, you might be having a few questions about all of this. And the first one is, of course, is spot really necessary? I mean, if we want just a set of cameras, like infrared cameras or other cameras running around on a mobile platform, why can't we just use like an RC car, you know, like, uh, like something from the movie Home Alone 3, you know, an RC car with some cameras strapped on it? Because spot is pretty expensive. It costs around $75,000. So you might wonder why do we want to use a lagged robot, a very expensive robot, and not something a bit more practical. But 
this is a question that actually the researchers of this study, they tried to answer it, and they said that there were three main advantages of using Spot over other kinds of machines. The first one is the wheel robots don't have enough, at least the wheeled robots, the wheel machines that the researchers consider, they don't have enough cargo capacity. So Spot can bring several kinds of instruments on its back. It can bring around 14 kilograms of capacity, which is not that bad. But wheel machines that they consider didn't have the same cargo capacity. Of course, this is a big main issue. If you want this instrumentation to be carried around, you want something that is able to do it. The second thing is that actually Spot, at least according to the healthcare workers that were trained, Spot is pretty easy to use. If you see the videos, people using Spot, they use this basically a joystick, like a video game. It is controlled like in a video game, like a character from some racing video game. So, so the researchers thought that it was pretty easy to train people to use it compared to other devices. And the third thing is a very well-known feature from Spot from Boston Dynamics, that is that it's pretty good at avoiding obstacles and at standing up from being, you know, or pushed around. This is something that Boston Dynamics really worked on its robots and it would be something beneficial for example in a busy hospital because yeah you could guess that for example it's not difficult to move on flat surfaces but if it has to climb over something, if it has for example to move in a pretty crowded area then it's beneficial to have this kind of robot that is made for uneven terrains for complicated situations which much more compared for example a wheeled machine. But the second and even more important question that you might have is do we really want to use spot or in general robots in healthcare settings do we want robots to attend patients because some people might say that robots like spot are creepy and unsettling and they might be worrying if these robots might scare patients and of course, robots in hospitals is not something new, but usually they're used for more specialized tasks. For example, robot surgeons that can assist surgeons in performing operations. Or talking about the pandemic, robots for disinfection, like these robots, these UVD robots, that were actually employed in some Chinese hospitals at the beginning of the pandemic to disinfect areas with UV light. But when it comes to interacting face-to-face -face with patients, what about these situation, can robots be good for this or are we going to scare patients? And this is the second point of the study, which was to assess these important questions and it was done through two main steps. And the first step was to conduct a nationwide survey on about a thousand people. And these people were asked questions like, would you like to be assisted by a robot in routine operations like receiving a nasal swab? And on average, according to the survey, people said that they would have no trouble being assisted by a robot for very routine operations. And then the second step was to test the robot on the field, so to test the robot on true patient, face-to-face -face patients. About 40 patients they were tested, and then they asked these patients how they felt about the interaction with Spot. And 93% of the patients said that the interaction was satisfactory, and about 83% of these patients, they said that the interaction was not that different from the one with a physical healthcare worker. But remember, in this study, they only employed Spot to detect viral signs, so there was no deep connection and communication and interaction between the robot and the patient. And in fact, this study contributes to a larger corpus of studies on how do we interact with robots and how do patients perceive these interactions, if they can be good or not, which is a pretty hot debate. There are several studies on that. There is a comprehensive article that I found on annual review of psychology that you can check in the description that discusses about all these studies and the research, this corpus of the research hints at how robots might in fact provide benefits, like companionship, for example, to humans. But it also points out how patients might miss something like the human touch in these sort of interactions. So what do you think? Would you like to be visited by Dr. Spot? Let me know in the comments. And if you're interested in these videos about robotics, consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.